this video is going to be some tips and tricks to working with coilover assemblies, how to assemble or disassemble them. Now, if you don't have a fancy like uh, coil spring compressor like this one, and you are going to be using these like auto parts stores, um, McPherson style spring compressors, this video is for you. So tip number one, um, when you go to the auto parts store to rent these, I mean, they're basically free. You just borrow them and bring them back and get your money back. But anyways, I like to get two sets because especially when you're working with like heavy duty coils, sometimes one on each end, you grab a coil and it won't be enough. You won't have room to get your top hat on and get everything fully assembled. You'll need to grab like then another coil and compress it down. And, and this will bottom out if you just have two. So I like to always get two sets. And additionally, it's just an extra safety margin. Like I almost always... Um, use three of these, especially when, like, when working with heavy duty, like four by four springs. Um, if this was like, you know, a Volkswagen Jetta spring, yeah, two would be totally fine. Tip number two, if you go and you try and install this onto the, the spring on like an assembled one, sometimes it won't fit. Like this doesn't fit because this coil spring, the coils are thicker than the factory ones. The wire itself is a larger diameter. So the trick to that is disassemble the compressor all the way. So you can see when you disassemble it, obviously you can take that one off as well, but once you have this off, you can now rock it into place. And so now it can get on the coil and then you can put the rod through once you got both of them in place. Tip number three, when you get to the point that you're ready to put the nut on the end of the shock, um, these nylock nuts are meant to be used once, so I don't want to risk something exploding um, because I reuse a nylock. Tip number four, when you go to tighten the nylock nut on the end, do not use an impact. Um, if you look through the instructions and in all these shock manufacturers, they say not to use an impact because you can damage the internals of the shock. So, how do you tighten it? Because if you put a socket on there, it's just going to spin the, so the shock shaft. Well, you take a hex key and you can put that in there to keep it from spinning. And then you can set up a wrench with a ratcheting wrench with a crow's foot. So that will allow you to get in there and also keep the shock shaft from moving. And of course, then you can hook this up to your torque wrench to torque it to spec. On the factory Gen 3 Montero shocks, for example, the torque spec was 17 foot pounds. On the Coney Heavy Tracks as a beefier shock, I think it's like 32. On these Bilsteins, I'm gonna go with something higher as well, probably in like a 25-ish range. It really doesn't really matter because you're not going to build force on that nut. It's just gonna spin down and tighten until these bushings um, touch the metal plate in this case. Like basically the assembly needs to be scrunched together and only then will it start loading the top nut with force and to where the torque wrench will then give you the reading. But uh, yeah, and that's this is probably the most important one. Don't use an impact on there. You could damage your shocks and void your warranty. And it specifically says not to do this in the instructions. And if you go to Bill Stein's website, for example, there's even a section that says like, what are the most common ways that people ruin their shocks? And this is on that list. And lastly, tip number five, do one side at a time. That way, if you run into any issues, you're not sure about orientations or fitment, you can always refer to the other side of your vehicle. In this case, on this Gen 3 Montero shock, that's 2001 to 2006, um, you want to pay attention to the orientation of the studs on the top hat. Uh, those need to be a certain way or else it's gonna fight you when you go and try to reinstall this. They're not gonna line up with the holes in the body. Um, quick way to remember this is you wanna line up any of these three studs in the top hat with the flat portion right here of the shock. So it'll run along like just an imaginary line and then to that. And that will make it so it just goes right back in. Easy peasy, Japanesey. Thanks guys, I hope that helps you out.